And by the way, sometimes we might identify a consumer insight. We might identify an organizational goal. And when we look at the technology, we go, well, maybe this platform isn't, isn't ready for this yet. And so we need to pivot. We need to start with another uh, consumer insight. And so you, you've really got to be starting on, a, on solid ground if you're going to build something that's going to be successful. Okay, everyone, we're here to talk about voice strategy. I'm Brett Kinsella, founder of voicebot.ai. And today I have with me Brandon Kaplan, who's the founder of Skilled Creative, a very well-known voice industry agency. And he's also co-founder of Journey, which actually addresses a lot of additional technologies as well. And I thought he would be the perfect person to bring online today to talk about voice strategy because he's done a lot of it. Brandon Kaplan, hey, welcome Brett. to 10 Minutes On. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Okay. So let's start with this idea of voice strategy. It's a term we've heard a lot over the years, but mm. I think it has different meanings to different people. Why don't you give me a sense of what you think about when you think about voice strategy and maybe how it's evolved over the last four or five years? Yeah. I mean, voice strategy, it's, it's essentially all the work that we're doing before we go into production of a, of a best-in-class voice experience. And so as you and I have discussed, uh, there's so many components to a really good voice program, a really good voice project. And, you know, before you get into creative production, conversational design, copywriting, visual production, audio production, you've really got to nail the strategy. And that's determining the consumer insight. That's determining the business use case. That's determining the platform you're going to be on, the modality that you're going to be on you know, why are we doing this? What's the best way to approach it? And then from there, I would say you've got your shoulders squared and you can design something that's, that's really impactful. Right. So when we think about voice strategy, one of the things you just mentioned was business case. Yeah. So I've seen a lot of, I've seen, I should say, I've seen a lot more voice user experiences than I've seen voice user experience business cases. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, there's there's so much emphasis in the industry on uh, the strategy of the conversational design. Uh, you know, what we've always really focused on, not just the conversational design, but is, is the business use case. It's, it, in order for someone to invest into voice, it's got to be for a purpose. And I think that, that it's, it's natural to look at an emerging technology and look at voice and it's exciting and, and it's interactive and it's this new kind of channel and, and want to bend it creatively. Um, but sometimes you're, you're bending things creatively without thinking about, you know, why are we here? What's the why of the business behind this? And so it's really important to determine that because you could build the most incredible experience in the world. It sounds great. It looks great. The, the design of it's phenomenal. And then no one shows up in the same way that you could build out the most incredible retail store in the most incredible mall in the most incredible city in the world. And if you're selling something nobody cares about, they're, they're not going to go in the front door. Yeah, that, that makes total sense to me. And it's really interesting because if we look at the segments, which are, which I think are growing the fastest and the ones that are more, most resilient yeah. to displacement in the corporate budget, it's the ones that started with a business case. It's the ones that are operationally focused, like the contact center or internally for to drive better operations, as opposed to some of the things that were really more novelties mm -hmm. and were sometimes tied to a campaign, sometimes not, sometimes just like a PR stunt. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all in the creative industry. And so we, we've, if you've been a fan of the advertising world or the creative world or the business consulting world, and you look at the, the campaigns that win Conline Awards and Webby's and things like that, every so often there's, there's creative that is just so wild and so visionary that the creative itself, just the, the creative expression drives the brand forward. You know, Old Spice really like these zany, completely changed commercials. And they weren't there, you know, telling you about the value of the ingredients um, but that creative just punched through. That's an outlier. More often than not, you have really good creative and you have to have good creative. It's got to be well-designed, but 
the business use case, the consumer insight that led you to this execution has to be there. Otherwise, it doesn't matter how good your creative is. It's not going not gonna to do anything. Okay. So you mentioned a couple of use cases here. Yeah. So let's, let's break that down a little bit because we know the contact center use case. We know some of the operational use cases. What are some of the use cases you think or that you've seen have solid ROI, good business cases uh, that are outside of those operational areas? Yeah. I mean, obviously customer experience, customer service, that's been uh, in existence for a long time. That's That's been conversational forever. You had humans doing it you know, for, for decades and decades and decades. Voice technology allowed that to adapt very quickly, but we're talking about these new consumer experiences that voice can, can uh, amplify. And so uh, we've seen that voice commerce uh, is starting to work really well for, for some of our clients. Um, voice kind of CRM building, lead generation, loyalty, data collection. Uh, we get really good conversion in those types of use cases. Um, voice search optimization. So people are asking voice devices all kinds of questions to, to do those kind of utilitarian search optimizations are, are really important. And then, you know, you look at other modalities like uh, voice controlled websites or voice controlled mobile apps. Well, it's these high frequency consumer journeys, things like travel searching or retail searching or e-commerce um, or research and education. These like high retention use cases are really valuable behind a voice UI. Um, okay. So can you give me an example of a, a company that you've worked with and what their use case was so that we can make this more tangible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of our clients is, uh, is Mars Wrigley and you know, you, you may know the, the brand, but you know, there's Snickers and Milky Way and Skittles and Starburst and all these really incredible confectionery brands. And, uh, you know, we've been working with them on these broad conversational AI programs and what led us into the executions wasn't, you know, oh, M&M's is fun and, and there's a, the, the yellow M&M is really cool and zany. Let's have it tell you a bedtime story. Like that seems like a natural thing you might want to do. Mm -hmm. But when we got into the consumer insights of it and the business use cases, you know, voice commerce really, really stepped out ahead. So we have done some really cool creative executions for the sake of creative. But what's really started to lead is these kind of more utility driven but creatively executed voice commerce initiatives. That were that were driven by consumer insights. So, like, what type of consumer insight leads you to say, "Oh, this should be voice commerce versus all the other commerce that these companies are already doing"? Um, just the, the research that we've done, and you know, when we launch into a program with a client, it's a mixed bag. We we do a ton of surveys. Uh, we do in depth interviews with stakeholders in the organization. We look at competitive analysis. We look at the state of the industry. We look at the technologies that are available to us. We mix that all together and we say, okay, well, we've identified this really insightful kind of consumer opportunity. We've married it to the goals of the brand. We've scraped the technology and we've said, yes, we can actually in a meaningful way build and execute against that goal. And then, and then we go and we build. And by the way, sometimes we might identify a consumer insight. We might identify an organizational goal. And when we look at the technology, we go, well, maybe this platform isn't, isn't ready for this yet. And so we need to pivot. We need to start with another uh, consumer insight. And so you, you've really got to be starting on, a, on solid ground if you're going to build something that's going to be successful. So I'm thinking about how this has changed. And we talked a lot about this when we first met in New York City. We're sitting down at Betaworks. And we're hypothesizing about how the market's going to develop. Yeah. And we had all these different ideas, many of which have actually come to pass. We like mm -hmm. this idea that media was going to be one of the one of the the higher adopting industry segments initially, you know, was one of them. But I'm interested in how strategy has changed because I'm hearing all these different types of conversations that I didn't hear a couple of years ago. It a lot of times it led with the idea of the novelty of it. Mm -hmm. And when we think about how it's changed, I think you started this idea that maybe it started more operational. It's like, how can we do this well, as opposed to why should we do it at all? Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if we go back to 2016, 17, 18, the entire industry 
was kind of sitting around staring at Amazon and Google saying, this is the next app marketplace. And we need to try every possible type of use case because we need to see which apps are going to go viral, right? Which is going to be the, the iPhone app that wins and becomes a unicorn. And, you know, as, as we've all seen, that, that hasn't necessarily to this point come to fruition. Um, and so you've seen a lot of the energy dissipate from, well, Alexa skills equal iPhone applications. It's a one-to-one. -one. And what we've seen the industry do more so is evolve into multimodal ecosystems. And so, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity in the channels of Amazon and Google, but there's also voice activated web and there's NLP and there's transcription and there's audio moderation and there's interactive audio ads and there's voice controlled mobile experiences and there's voice controlled cars and there's voice commerce and voice search. And those don't all live inside of an Alexa skill. They're spread across all these different modalities. And so it makes our jobs, I think, more exciting. Um, but the challenge now is you're not only de designing a strategy for just one channel anymore. You're having to look at 10 or 15 possible channels and decide where the best place to, to put that, that program is. Well, I think it's also interesting, too, that when we started off with this proposition that you need to develop the best possible voice experience, the yeah. question is, how do we define the best possible voice experience? And I remember you telling me one time that you had set this objective around conversion mm -hmm. and that you wanted people to get through the whole process. And in your metrics, you saw that the design that you had initially laid out, you were losing people because there were too many turns before they got to the actual benefit point yeah. where they're converting. Yeah, we, we've seen this time and time again. And I, and I think this is... Uh... You and I have discussed like you could have so much emphasis on conversational design that you you possibly build something that's over engineered. Uh, but a, a really good conversational designer will will probably say something similar to what I'm about to say, which is uh, it's about the combination of smart, efficient design with good creative. And so pretty consistently when we've got over romantic about we want to make this really amazing quiz experience that's a curator that assigns a persona to you that then leads you to into a product curation engine and then out to you know another experience. Time and time again, we just notice consistently every turn of conversation that is not really, really intentional, you lose a percentage of traffic. And so at the end of the day, the best thing you can possibly do is to slice off potential turns of conversation that aren't really driving to your end goal. And that might mean losing some really fun creative and some really good visuals and some really great audio production, but it improves the conversion completion performance of the experience. So that's kind of the, the artist challenge. And you want to make these really fun, amazing things, but they need to perform. Okay. When we think about voice strategy today, I think what you said is start with the business case or the value and that'll guide you. And then you gave a little pro tip there that every time you can slice off a turn of conversation, generally you're going to be moving more closely towards whatever objective you have. Yeah, not an absolute, but it seems to work pretty pretty consistently. As long as it's in service to the business use case and to the creative experience, then efficiency wins. Um, so, Absolutely. Brandon Kaplan, thanks for coming and talking about the evolution of voice strategy. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate it. Always good to chat with you. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to help us with YouTube's famed algorithm. And it'll be good for you too, because you'll be notified when the next 10 minutes on video drops and you'll have that information before everyone else. So please like, subscribe, and may the voice bots be with you.